Welcome to my channel. This is JC Rock and Metal Reviews. My name is John. Today I have the top 10 albums from the first quarter of 2022. Albums released in January, February, and March of this year. So I will be including metal, rock, alternative. I'm just going to mix them all up. I'm basically only including albums that I did full reviews of on this channel. So you can go back and check out all the full reviews. I will put a playlist on it at the end of the album, at the end of the uh, review called uh, New Album Reviews 2022. Uh, now let me get right into it. So a couple of albums that I liked at first, but they didn't really make the list. Like, you know, after I went back and listened to them, I didn't really like them as much. So for example, Wildy Run, uh, Epigon, that one, yeah, I remember like in my uh, thumbnail, I put like the best album of 2022 so far, but that one I actually didn't like, you know, later on. Battle Beast, Circus of Doom, that one, I guess I didn't like. I know a lot of people like that one better than I did. Saxon Carpe Diem, good album, but it just, you know, not, not up to par. Venom Prison, Erebos, I like that one a lot, but I guess not as much, um, you know, now that I went back and listened to it. And the Corpse Grinder uh, solo album, that one I liked, but it just, you know, just didn't make it. Now, a couple of uh, honorable mentions. These are the ones that, like, almost made my top 10, so these would be you know, like 11 to 14 or something like that. <clears throat> so uh, Amorphous with Halo. That one actually didn't like at first, but that one grew on me a lot. That one came close to making top 10. Sabaton, The War to End All Wars. Now you're probably surprised that's not in my top 10, but it was close. I like it, but the other ones I like better. Crowbar, Zero and Below. That was a good one, but it came close. And with this new album, McCavain, The Great Below, black metal album and uh, it almost made my list I like that one a lot but it just didn't make it so at number 10 this one's gonna be surprising power paladin with the magic of windfire steel it's a debut album by power metal band I'm actually surprised it made my list you know they're like an underground band <clears throat> you know I'm not really the biggest power metal fan I'm kind of like just starting to get into it but I liked it because it just had this like classic like power metal sound uh, Similar to like, uh, you know, like Halloween and something, you know, those types of bands. Some great songs, Dark Crystal, There Could Be Only One, Righteous Fury. And just a, an album that I liked a lot. At number nine, Tony Martin, Thorns. Now he was the vocalist for Black Sabbath during the late 80s and early 90s. And this one has that similar sound. You know, those Black Sabbath albums, Headless Cross, Cross Purposes, you know, those types of albums. They're dark and heavy. It has a classic sound. Um, you don't really hear it that often. Best songs, Book of Shadows, Run Like the Devil, Black Widow Angel. So if you like classic Black Sabbath, uh, definitely check this album out. At number eight, Out on Bail by Warrior Soul. Now this one I'm surprised that this made my list because during my first review, I wasn't really too like enthusiastic about it. I think I gave it like a seven or 7.5 or something, but it did grow on me a lot after I listened to it like a few more times. It's alternative rock. It has a sound like their early albums from like the late 80s to early 90s. The lyrics are very political. You know, they talk a lot about current events. And, you know, for example, Hip Hip Hooray, they talk about COVID and the GOP and things like that. It's a great song. Other great songs, One More for the Road, Out on Bail. You know, Out on Bail, that, that's a very like uh, Guns N' Roses or like Rolling Stones type of uh, song. And definitely an album to check out. At number seven, I have Jethro Tull with the Zella Gene. Um, this one I actually thought would rank much higher. I liked it a lot when it first came out. Um, but it did make my top ten. It's a very kind of like a laid back album. It has, you know, it doesn't really have like a hard rock sound of like Aqualong or like the prog rock of Thick as a Brick. But the songs are good. It's just like rock and folk rock. I think some people said it could have been an Ian Anderson solo album, but you know, you can argue that. But other than that, I like it a lot. Best songs, Mrs. Tibbetts, Shoshana Sleeping, The Zella Jean, Sad City Sisters, and The Fisherman of Ephesius. It's just a, a good album from a band that I've always liked all my life. At number six, uh, I have Voivod with Synchro Anarchy. So um, it's a band that has a sound, they're very unique. Uh, it's kind of like a combination of many different styles, some thrash, like progressive metal, but the album is very good. It does have that classic sound going back to albums like Nothing Face, Dimension Hatros, 
has some really great like bass grooves, some like futuristic like guitar riffs, that classic boy bot sound. They just did it very well. Best songs, Sleeves Off, Memory Failure, Mind Clock, and Holographic Thinking. At number five, I have Dave Grohl with Dream Widow. Another one I'm surprised, this one just came out last week. And really great album. It's like an extreme metal and based on the fictional metal band from the Foo Fighters Studio 666 movie. Now, unfortunately, Taylor Hawkins died, like, I think it was the day it was released and I actually found the news after it, like, the next morning after I posted this. I posted it on a Friday night and I, like, learned about his death on Saturday morning. So when I did my review, I didn't really mention uh, Taylor Hawkins at the time, but it is unlike anything Foo Fighters have ever done. You know, some songs sound completely different, like grindcore and like doom metal, black metal. Other songs sound like uh, Foo Fighters, like playing like really heavy. So best songs, March of the Insane, Angel with Severed Wings, and Come All Ye Unfaithful. At number four, Placebo, Never Let Me Go. Another one, this one just came out last week. It's alternative rock, has a lot of like an electronic, uh, you know, beats and electronic sounds, but they also have some like, like you know, guitars as well. This was, um, you know, new album, lots of catchy songs, and they're just very memorable. You know, they mix this electronic music and alternative rock. They mix some Britpop and, I don't know, like a little bit of punk and, you know, they, had, they mix up a lot of things. The songs are very well written. They talk about like mental health and pharmaceuticals and drugs and things like that. Best songs, Beautiful James, Happy Birthday in the Sky, Hugs, and Surrounded by Spies. So this is a band, maybe you haven't like heard them, listened to them like since the late 90s, but definitely check them out. This is really a really good album. At number three, another one that surprised me, uh, Hammerfall with Hammer of Dawn. You know, at first thing, I wasn't like, you know, super impressed by this album. I thought it was pretty good, you know. I'm just starting to get into, um, you know, that power metal, but... I listened to this over, you know, a couple more times, you know, since I reviewed it and it just grew on me a lot. I mean, these songs are very catchy, really great uh, riffs. The thing that like, I like best about this album is just like the guitar sound. They're just really great riffs. They stick in your head and, you know, I really like it. Best songs, No Son of Odin, Venerate Me, Reveries, uh, No Mercy, pretty much the whole album. At this point, like all the songs on all the albums are, are really good. At number two, I have Scorpions with Rock Believer. Um, this one, I kind of thought it might have been number one because I did like it a lot. You know, but it a uh, great album. There was one album I just liked a little better. Brings back that classic sound of albums like Blackout and Love Drive, Animal Magnetism, and, you know, some of those like 80s albums like Love at First Thing and Savage Amusement. Um, you know, they do kind of capture that, you know, period of the band. Just classic hard rock, heavy metal, best songs, Rock Believer, Seventh Son, Peacemaker, and Call of the Wild. And my number one is Impera by Ghost. Now, just great songs, 80s arena rock sound, uh, mixed with that, those like dark themes, you know, that th everything that Ghost uh, has made popular, but I guess they kind of like lightened it up a little on this album. Some great songs, Kaiserian, 20s, Spillways, Hunter's Moon, and Watchers in the Sky. I just did a Ghost Top 10 with the Chill Dude on the Couch. We did a collaboration. You can check that out on my channel. Now, I know this was a divisive album. I know some people like didn't like it. Some people prefer like the earlier stuff, which is more like the more like darker you know, stuff. But I like the more like popular stuff, like Prequel and this album and uh, Meloria. Those are like my three favorite albums, even though I only have five. But Anyway, this is my best. This is my number one for the first quarter of 2022. So let me know in the comments any other albums that you think I missed uh, that were released so far in 2022. So coming up tomorrow, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers Unlimited Love on Sunday, Meshuggah Immutable. And then after that, the next week, I do have, um, there are many um, anniversaries uh, for April. So I'll be doing those during the week. So thanks for watching. Uh, please remember, like, comment, subscribe, check out the other videos. And see you in the next And before I go, if you are interested in any of the full reviews from this top 10 or any of the others from uh, 2022, I made a playlist called uh, something like the best new uh, or new release albums or whatever it's called. I'll stick the playlist right there and you can find all of these full reviews. So see you later.